The Harry Ransom Center is an extraordinary cultural archive. It's a research library and museum, but also a place of unlimited discovery. A wide range of primary source material that's illuminating for, for students and for scholars, trying to come to some deeper understanding of our cultural heritage and our common past. The Harry Ransom Center is a place of discovery. Not just for scholars who come here to write their books, but for anyone. We have public programs, we have film series, we have poetry readings. We have a lot of different modes of access to the materials here. It's user friendly, it's student friendly, and it's public friendly. It is an incredible archive. It is an incredible museum. Harry Ransom was a visionary, and he understood that a great university has at its core a research institution that houses uh, cultural artifacts for students and scholars for generations to come. And he began assembling here in Austin what now is one of the world's premier research centers for studying the arts and humanities. The Ransom Center collections span hundreds of years of human history and creative production. We do have great strengths in literature, the performing arts, film, photography, and art. It's a fathomless collection. We have materials related to many fields of endeavor and something truly for everyone. Our literature collections start way back in the medieval period and go all the way through to the present. We are actively collecting 600 writers whose first book was published after 1950. Writers' archives contain so many different kinds of materials that can help us understand how a great work of literature came into being. There are drafts, of course. You can see the writer's creative process unfold. One of my favorite uh, materials in literature collections is all of the letters that Neil Cassidy wrote to Jack Kerouac during the 40s when they were going through the experiences that end up being fictionalized in On the Road. And we also have a notebook that Kerouac kept in which he was working through his ideas for a first version of that novel. The film collection covers the entire range of, of the filmmaking experience from all the various creative people, the producers, directors, the actors, the production designers, art director. These are the false starts, the personal papers, revisions, the creative mind at work. We have the archive of Robert De Niro the papers of such filmmakers as David O. Selznick, the papers of Gloria Swanson, Paul Schrader, and over a million film stills from movies from the very beginning in the silent era to the present day. For someone who is interested in the history of photography, the collection has incredible depth and breadth. There are over five million images, if you include negatives and prints. This includes some work by very early important pioneers, Joseph de Nips, Louis-Jacques Monde de Guerre, William Henry Fox Talbot, Robert Hunt. We also have very important collections of works by American 20th century photographers, Walker Evans, Ansel Adams. We have the entire archives of the portraitist Arnold Newman, the photojournalist David Douglas Duncan. We have the Magnum Photos collection, nearly 200,000 press prints that functioned as the print library of the New York office of the Magnum Photos Agency. One of our great strengths is the history of theater, going back to our wonderful early editions of the works of Shakespeare, to great 20th century playwrights from Samuel Beckett, John Osborne, Tom Stoppard, Tennessee Williams, David Mamet, Adrian Kennedy, the list really goes on and on. We have something to offer everyone who's interested in this common past that we cherish and that we work so hard to preserve. The Ransom Center Library attracts 10,000 scholars a year who come here to do research with the collections. It's an institution that's totally public and it's here not only for the general public, but also for the many, many students at the University of Texas. One of the wonderful things about teaching here is the fact that the staff believes in the teaching part of the mission. The Ransom Center, in a way, becomes the third teacher in the room. Every time I 
came, I encountered something new and that experience um, has really, I think, added some depth to my major that I otherwise wouldn't have had. Well, the Ransom Center for many years has had a very strong fellowship program. We award about 60 fellowships a year. Now that's a wonderful thing, uh, especially for, for young scholars and for graduate students. Because without that kind of support, in many instances, it's either very difficult or impossible for us to come and work on collections like this. So I believe we're, we're extremely fortunate to have this kind of, of commitment on the part of the Centre to fostering the careers of young scholars. It's important that an institution that's collecting also have the means and the capacity to care for that material that it's assembling. The conservation program at the Ransom Center is one of the things that differentiates the center from many other collecting institutions and really distinguishes it. The conservation department at the Ransom Center is a fairly large program. We have focused in this department on books paper and photography, and we have three separate laboratories where that work is done, and each have their own conservators. Something that's been around for a thousand years has a story to tell within itself. It's going to have dirt, creases, annotations, any number of changes have been made to that piece of paper. Our goal is to preserve our materials and at the same time reveal our culture. So we are taking steps now to preserve these collections so that they'll be there as a source of discovery for generations to come. The Ransom Center is able to draw on all of its disciplinary holdings to pull together very broadly themed exhibitions. We put collection materials in their historical and cultural context, and so we're really always trying to, in a sense, offer an interpretation of the collections to the community at large. One outstanding exhibit that's always on display at the Harry Ransom Center is the Gutenberg Bible. It's one of five complete copies in the United States. Another permanent exhibition in the lobby is a photograph known as View from the Window at Le Gras. It was made in 1826 or 1827 by Joseph Nisifor Nieps, who was a pioneer in the history of photography. And this photograph is the earliest known photograph made in camera from nature that's known to exist. With the opening of the Ransom Center Galleries, we had an opportunity to really expand our educational offerings and opportunities. We have public tours and anybody can show up to that. There's often a wide age range. You can interact with people that have an interest in what's in the exhibit. It just makes it really exciting. Every calendar year, a wonderful slate of programs that both stand alone and complement the Ransom Center's exhibition program. We repeatedly receive comments from individuals about how much they have learned at our exhibitions and how much they've been stimulated to go off and continue to learn from what they've seen in the Ransom Center's exhibitions. But what we really want it to do is to catalyze people to go out and learn more about the subjects we're able to explore at the Ransom Center. The Ransom Center is an extraordinarily busy place. Thousands of people visit, whether it's to visit the reading rooms or to visit for a class or to visit the programs that we offer throughout the year. I think what's unique about the Ransom Center as a library and museum is that we're so friendly and we're so dedicated to sharing the collections that we have with a larger community. When we acquire an archive, we try to process it very quickly and make it available for scholars and the general public to come and see. To have, I think, in the middle of Texas, an archive of this kind of richness and well, uh, that anyone can simply walk into and request materials is a wonderful thing. There is something magical about an archive. One gets an almost indescribable feeling of a deeper, richer world. I think we do an extraordinary job of communicating our passion for what we do and our passion for having other people get as excited about these topics and these subjects and these collections as we are. The Ransom Center is available for everyone. It's a busy place at all times of the day and night and we hope you'll visit as well.